Alright, so continuing with differential equations, in the previous video I talked about how to solve the first order differential equation dy dx equals to 3y and we found that by integrating both sides and by grouping the y's and the x's on different sides of the equation we can actually solve it and it gave us the following general solution which was a e to the 3x in this video what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna expand this concept by solving a nonlinear first order differential equation called the logistic equation so this is basically a mathematical model that was um, developed a little bit later after that equation was solved and essentially what it relates is the population growth um, given some um, additional growth pattern in it so we're gonna have a, a constant k times p which is the size of the population at any time t times 1 minus p over k so this is our differential equation now how do we check whether this is separable or not well you can see that you can isolate this whole term here and you can divide both sides such that all the p's are on the, uh, the left hand side with the differential element dp and then you can have the dt on the other side so let's just do that first we're gonna have dp over p1 minus p k and we're going to integrate that of course with respect to p and that's going to be equal to the integral of k with respect to dt now there's a general rule for integrating fractional functions like this and it is that we don't want any fractions on the denominator and that's just more of a more thing that simplifies calculations later on so how can we actually get rid of that fraction there well we want to get rid of that k in the bottom so what we can do is we can multiply both the numerator and the denominator by k over k because this is essentially one and what this is going to come to is that that's going to leave a k on the top and we're going to have p that k is going to multiply everything inside the brackets here so that's going to be a k minus k times p over k the k's cancel out so it leaves us with p this side with respect to dp and this side we can leave um, untouched for now now how do we integrate this well because this is a nonlinear term in the denominator we're gonna have to use something called partial fractions so partial fractions tell us tell us that when you have a fractional function like this where you can factorize the denominator in this way you can usually separate that into a sum of two fractions so in this case we're gonna have find a constant a and another constant b that would make this expression equivalent to this one so what we can do now is we can multiply both sides by this denominator and that's gonna simplify the equation and that's gonna become k equals to a k minus p plus b p now we want to find the values of a and b so that we can put it in, into this expression so what we're going to do is we're going to choose values of p that will get rid of each of these constants uh, one at a time so if we choose p equals to zero then our b term goes to zero because it is multiplying p and here p, uh, p goes to zero as well so we're left with a times k so this goes away and a equals to 1 so we already solve for one uh, of the constants now for the second one we need to make the term a equals to 0 so how can we do that well we can make p equal to k so that it cancels out with this one so let's make p equal to k and that's gonna leave us with k equals a times 0 so this is gonna go away and then we're gonna have k so case cancel out once again and B is gonna be equal to 1 so now that we have that we're gonna have the following expression 1 over P 
plus 1 over k minus p. So this right here is what we're actually going to integrate. We're going to put it back into this function here, and we're going to integrate it. And because this is just 1 over p to the power of 1, that's just going to be a natural logarithm when we integrate it. So I'm going to erase this side so that we can do that properly now. So that's our expression here. So we integrate the following, 1 over p plus 1 over k minus p dp equals to integral of k times dt. So this is pretty straightforward. That's going to be the natural log of p plus the natural log of k minus p and that's going to be equal to on the other side it's going to be equal to k t plus some constant c so that's what we have so far now just take into account the fact that we actually need to make sure that this is um, balanced. So actually I made a mistake here because this should be a negative sign here. And the reason for that is that because we're integrating k minus p in the denominator, this is a minus here, so to balance it out we need to make the numerator minus such that this differentiates into that. So that's what the expression should be. Alright, so now that we have that, what can we do? Well, it's usually better to group all the logarithms together. So by the laws of logarithms, we can actually make this into a single one. So that's going to become p over k minus p equals to kt plus c. And what's that going to be equal to? Well, we're going to have, if we take the exponential of both sides, we're going to have p over k minus p equals to e k t plus c. And just to follow on the same convention that we used last time, I'm just going to group this together and make it into a e, e to the k t. But first, what can we do with this? Well, let me just change this around a little bit so I'm gonna make this more implicit now this is gonna be a e to the kt so a is just e to the c and it's bundled together into one constant so what we can do now is we can change this around so we can have p equals to k minus p a E K T, and if we expand that we're gonna get P equals to K A E K T minus P A E K T and now if we move this to the other side we're gonna have P plus P A E K T equals to this on the other side which is k a e k t and then finally if we want to get rid of the p's we just go into this I'm just gonna draw it on the other side so it's a little bit clearer uh, to see so just gonna erase this from here And what's that, what's that going to become? Well, that's going to become p of t. So it's a function of time. It's going to be equal to k a e k t over 1 plus a e k t. So that's going to be our solution for this particular equation. Now there's another way in which we could have done that and it's probably going to be better if we do it that way. So instead of going about it this way, 
we could have easily just changed the sign convention in here so if we multiply this whole line by minus one then we're gonna invert the signs on the other side as well so I'm gonna get here what am I gonna get so I'm gonna get minus ln p plus ln k minus p equals to minus kt plus c y plus c well c is just a constant so it doesn't matter whether it's negative or positive because in the end what's going to give us the value of c is the initial condition which is not given in this case so we can just assume it's positive um, so we can rearrange this as ln k minus p over p like that and then minus kt plus c so take the exponential of both sides we're gonna be left with a e to the minus kt and now if we rearrange it well we're gonna have k minus p on this side equals to a p a a minus kt and now we can move this other p to the other side so that's gonna become p of t equals to k over 1 plus a e to the minus k t now it seems like I went through a lot of trouble there and the main reason was to show you that both methods will give you the same solution because from the other expression we got previously we could have easily come to this by doing some algebraic manipulation so really this is just a matter of finding what's most convenient for uh, this particular problem and usually this is better because having just one exponential in here means that we can do some more stuff with it it's more intuitive to work with it so the reason for that is that we can take limits on this function and see what happens to the population as time increases without bounds so what happens to t what happens to p as t goes to infinity you may ask and this is a very interesting thing this is a very important thing that we need to ask when we're solving a differential equation especially when it's respect to uh, with uh, to time so we take the limit of this function the limit as t goes to infinity of the population well what's that gonna be this is k this is 1 plus a and because that's a negative I'm just gonna write it like this that's k times infinity okay so let's work this around from here so we have e to the infinity that's gonna be infinity that's gonna be a very large number what happens to a fraction when you divide it by infinity well it will tend to zero because it will get so small it would actually tend to zero so in the end you will actually end up with the population being equal to k which is the function itself so that's um, a really interesting thing that comes out of this differential equation and I really encourage you to do this kind of thing when you find a solution to it because it reveals some of the properties of that particular system um, and the same as if we put t equals to zero in it we're gonna get uh, an, a different expression for it but that's essentially the concept behind it um, not all there are actually in fact very few differential equations that are separable but there the ones that are are usually very convenient and useful for some particular applications so in the, in the next video I'm going to show you some more examples on first order ordinary differential equations